Hi everybody, I thought I'd bring out another video. Um, I'm doing this as per the Holy Spirit's uh, urging. And like I said, if we pass critical dates, we go on to the next. But I think this video is going to be pretty colossal uh, in my humble opinion uh, as the leading of the Holy Spirit over the last couple of days so uh, i want to present this to you and ask that you like and share but more so share um, i'm not trying to get uh, kudos for myself as everything is all for the glory of god not for me and but i want this to be shared uh, with others as they're is a lot of critical stuff that's coming up. As you see, we're crossing a point of no return, both the rapture and destruction coming very soon. So with that, I'll go from here. So we're at the precipice of where we're about to cross over a threshold in the coming uh, weeks, uh, in particular, starting with the total solar eclipse april 8th uh, as many of you know so i'm not going to go into details on the total solar eclipse i'm only going to touch on it for the topic at hand as i go forward but not really cover it i think it's already being greatly covered by many channels out there so my main point is the upcoming events and then crossing over this threshold, which I believe, and you're starting to see things occur now around the world, uh, including with the Francis uh, Scott Key uh, bridge being collapsed just yesterday. But there's more to come, so I want to cover that. And uh, I'll say here too, my dog is pretty heavily snoring, and my throat's pretty raspy from allergies but uh please forgive that in advance and um let me go again from here so since i have a tendency in my videos not to put the uh, information the critical information till the end of the video so it just kind of drags until that point i want to put on uh here what i'm going to cover as i go through this video and it's not limited to that so i'm gonna have the devil's comment could be visible during the april 8th total solar eclipse i'm also going to go back and cover the uh, 1811 and 1812 new madrid earthquakes uh, that were felt as far as Washington, D.C. and Boston, which was about 900 miles away. Then there was uh, church bells, including the Liberty Bell replica, not the one in Philadelphia due to the crack, but the replica that's in Boston that rang 1,300 miles away from the shaking of the 18th. 11 and 1812 new madrid earthquakes then there was the war of 1812 that followed those earthquakes as well as other events um so this is just a limited amount and also the sinking of the titanic occurred in 1912 almost a hundred uh, in 12 years ago. So right now we're still on the 111th anniversary until April 15th. So that's the 111 symmetry that you've been seeing, uh, including in Repo Man 64's 1111. But there's also uh, this channel, and I highly recommend you go to this channel and it's called from games to god and i'll have a little bit more of a pic i have of his so i'll put his information in the description box but he's only got 
a few subscribers and I think his channel warrants way more subscribers than that so um, please check it out and subscribe to his channel to help get out that information as well but I also see the rapture and destruction of the USA coming very soon so I will be covering the chronology of the events of the Titanic and as I think that's applicable to our crossing over from the 111 to the 112 point that I just showed a little bit earlier. So everybody or just about everybody is familiar with um, Ecclesiastes 1.9 which uh, is paraphrased that there's nothing new under the sun but starting in verse 5 it says the sun also rises and the sun goes down and hastens to the place where it arose so in other words the sun rises in the east and it sets in the west and 24 hours later it's doing the same thing it's repeating again rising again in the east the next morning and then setting again in the evening and of course the famous verse right here in verse 9 that which is has been is what will be that which is done is what will be done and there is nothing new under the sun so that is actually true with upcoming events that are about to occur over the coming weeks so we already know about the x or the tov that's about to occur over the united states there was the one that traversed the united states on august 21st 2017 uh, which is soros number 145 and the upcoming one which is about to occur in another week on april 8 2024 which goes through Mexico and exits through Nova Scotia. It uh, goes through many cities, as you know, named Nineveh. So that is Soros number 139. And if you look at the Soros numbers only, that repeated itself with the eclipses that traversed Turkey prior to the February 6 earthquakes in 2023. So there was a similar X that was formed over Turkey and or Tav uh, that occurred in August 11th, 1999, and that was Soros 145, which is the same uh, in a series of solar eclipses. I'm not going to go through what that means you can look that up on google what the soros numbers mean but that's identical to the august 21st and they had that eclipse again on august 11 1999 which traversed in this direction and then they also had on march 29 2006 soros 139 which is the same series of solar eclipses that falls under the Soros number 139 for our upcoming X on April 8th. Like, and theirs was this solar eclipse that went that way and intersected over Turkey near the region of where the earthquakes occurred in February of 2023. So with those two eclipses that form an X or Tav over the United States and earlier over Turkey, I think it's alluding to a possible great earthquake. And theirs was a 7.8 on the Richter scale or magnitude um, that occurred last year in February. But this may be a possible upcoming earthquake over the new madrid zone uh, for the united states with the soros numbers being identical 
Furthermore, the duration between the eclipse dates, not the years, for Soros 139, which was the one in uh, Turkey was on March 29th, and ours is on April 8th. That's a duration of 10 days separation. And with Soros 145, which theirs was on August 11th, and ours was earlier on August 21st, and that was the one in 2017. The duration between the dates, again, is 10 days. So there's that similarity. So furthermore, with the number seven, both the Anatolian and the New Madrid seismic zones form the number seven. So here's the one over Turkey, and they're called both the East and the North Anatolian Fault. And that's where the uh, series of earthquakes and aftershocks occurred during the 2023 earthquakes in Turkey, forming the number seven. At the New Madrid Zone, these are mapped out from the 1811-1812. Uh, you notice that over New Madrid, near the boot heel, of Missouri it forms also the number seven but you notice that this one looks leaner than this one and that's similar to Pharaoh's dream that he had uh, that Joseph interpreted which was he had the dream of the seven fat cows and the seven lean cows and they represented seven years a feast followed by seven years of famine in Egypt. And then the New Madrid seismic zone is pretty much near the region of Little Egypt in Illinois. So I think the United States is about to enter its or is starting to enter into its seven years of famine, which will be, of course, after the rapture. But there's those similarities, and like, Ecclesi like Ecclesiastes 1.9, there's nothing new under the sun. So since there's nothing new under the sun, I wanted to take a closer look at the total solar eclipse paths that traversed over Turkey, forming the X or the Tav. And so you have this region of complete totality, where they intersect and that's where the anatolian faults are and this is also the region but more so west towards the coast of the seven churches of anatoly or in other words the seven churches of revelation which i'll go a little bit into but the region that had the greatest earthquake magnitude earthquakes was in so that was in the Karaman Maris earthquake epicenter region in Turkey and this is where those greatest earthquakes occurred so it's a little bit towards the southwest of where the intersecting region is for the paths of those two eclipses so if you superimpose the Turkey earthquakes and eclipses over the map of the United States, the 2017 and the upcoming April 8th total solar eclipse, they almost completely match one for one. This red region is the area of totality that was for the intersection in Turkey. So it's almost an identical match to ours. And then where the uh, region of the earthquakes that occurred in Turkey that was southeast of there, it falls directly over Nashville, Tennessee. So am I saying that there could be an earthquake over the New Madrid zone and that Nashville will be potentially uh, hardest hit? I have no idea, but I do find this very interesting to say the least. So I also wanted to touch briefly on the seven churches of Anatoly, 
also known as the seven churches of the book of Revelation. So with the earthquakes that occurred in Turkey, the highest magnitude earthquakes occurred outside of the city of Karaman Maras. <laughs> Sorry if I mispronounced that. But the greatest density of aftershocks were in this city, Ginsentep. And then the churches, the seven churches of the book of Revelation are in the coastal region of Turkey. But I noticed this spacing and I thought, wow, this looks kind of like a one-to-one -one spacing with the Church of Philadelphia and the Church of Laodicea. So when I did an overlap or superimpose the, uh, the two cities of the earthquakes shown here, in the two white circles. I didn't put them on top so that you could see. Uh, I offset it a little bit so you could see the spacing. And then the seven churches of the book of Revelation shown in the red squares. You can in fact see that the Karaman Maris, where the two largest earthquakes occurred, is directly over the Church of Philadelphia, while the aftershocks that were centered around the town of Genziab Tep is actually overlays with the Church of Laodicea. So there seems to be a one-to-one -one correlation between those two earthquakes that occurred in February of 2023 and the Church of Philadelphia and Laodicea. So I wanted to also take a closer look at the crossroads area between our two eclipses and in that region of intersection of totality is the Shawnee National Park which is completely enclosed in this region and falls within uh, in between both the Mississippi and the Ohio rivers and when you zoom in even further within that crossroads totality region like I said is the Shawnee National Park but again southeast of the central part of the Shawnee National Park is a city called Anna Illinois so there is also tons of Shawnee and Anna connections associated with the events that occurred with the New Madrid 1811 and 1812 earthquakes and stuff that I see that could potentially occur in the coming weeks after our total solar eclipse uh, that traverses over Little Egypt near the New Madrid uh, seismic zone. So prior to the 1811 New Madrid earthquakes, it was preceded by the appearance of what they call a great comet. And it was brightest during when the earthquakes occurred. And the name of this comet is Tecumseh's Comet. And Tecumseh was a Shawnee Indian leader whose name means shooting star or he who walks across the sky. And that was his given name at birth. But prior to this great comet of 1811 named Tecumseh's Comet, it has an orbit of 3,065 years. So prior to this earthquake, it was last seen during the times of Ramses II in Egypt. And of course, where the eclipses are going to intersect is in Little Egypt. And as I just mentioned that Tecumseh's Comet was seen prior to the 1811 New Madrid earthquakes, but was seen 3,000 plus years earlier during the times of Ramses II in, in Egypt and this pathway of totality will occur over Little Egypt. What's interesting 
is Tecumseh's Comet was discovered on March 25th of 1811, the same day as our penumbral lunar eclipse that just occurred two days ago. But because it was obscured by moonlight, it was also founded by Jean-Louis Pons later on April 11th of 1811 in Europe, and that was called Napoleon's Comet in Europe instead of Tecumseh's Comet. So with the upcoming Devil's Comet called 12P Pons Brook, the same discoverer, uh, Jean-Louis Pons, it's expected to be visible during the time of totality over Little Egypt on April 8th of 2024. So there's just so many similarities going on. And then, of course, Napoleon. And again, Tecumseh means he who walks across the sky. And that sounded so similar to Methuselah, which means his death shall bring. So just as Tecumseh's comet, or a.k.a. Napoleon's comet, was discovered by Jean-Louis Pons, and this comet was seen preceding the 1811 New Madrid earthquake, we also have the Devil's Comet, was discovered by Pons, in addition to Brooks, may also be seen during the totality part of the April 8th total solar eclipse, in particular over Little Egypt. Furthermore, the Shawnee chief Tecumseh was affiliated with the War of 1812. So I'm just going to go ahead and read this. The Shawnee chief Tecumseh created alliances with other nations to resist American settlers pushing into their land. War between the U.S. and Great Britain was declared on June 18th of 1812. One of the first battles was a major defeat for the Americans. Tecumseh's Confederacy allied with the small British militia and forced Americans to surrender Detroit in August of 1812. Later, British troops burned down the Capitol and White House, called at that time the Presidential Mansion, in retaliation for the American forces looting and burning York, Canada. So this was the origination of the of the War of 1812, and they burned down the White House at that time. So the first engagement of the War of 1812 was between the Shawnee uh, in combination with the British against the Americans. And I'll go ahead and read this too. The Shawnee homelands covering most of the current states of Kentucky, Indiana, Ohio, Western Pennsylvania, and West Virginia were the first epic battleground in the United States acquisition of new territory. Tecumseh had two meetings with the Indiana Territory Governor, William Henry Harrison, who became our ninth president. But Harrison destroyed Prophetstown, which is a part of this first engagement of 1812. So Tecumseh's younger brother, Tense Wadawa, Wadawa, I believe, aka the Prophet, he was the founder of Prophetstown, which is now Indiana. And this is also another connection with Anna the Prophetess, and I'll go into that. So just as the intersecting region of the two total solar eclipses that traverse the United States. That is the region that encompasses the Shawnee National Forest along with the city of Anna, Illinois. So there's the Anna the Prophetess 
to Ken Swatawa, uh, the prophet connection. I think I mispronounced his name. But again, Tecumseh's younger brother is Ten Swatawa, and that means the prophet. And he was the founder of Prophet's Town, which is now Indiana. And you have the Anna connection with her being the, the prophetess. And she was a part of the tribe of Asher. And the banner of Asher is the olive tree. So in Genesis 30, 13, it says, Leo said, I am happy for the daughters will call me blessed. And she called his name Asher. And that was the son of Leah and Jacob. And the number 3013 without the zero is 313. But it can be transposed to 331 or March 31st. And that might be alluding to something that might be coming up in the next few days. So in Luke chapter 2, verses 36 through 38, you have Anna bears witness to the Redeemer Jesus. And it says in verse 36, Now there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phinuel of the tribe of Asher. And I'll go on from here. So Anna, the prophetess, is mentioned again in Luke chapter 2, verses 36 through 38. But if you add up the summation of 36 plus 37 plus 38, it equals to 111, which is that symmetry between the blood moon tetrads. And there's 88 days between the annular ring of fire solar eclipse that occurred October 14th of last year and 88 days again from that 111 symmetry of the blood moon tetrad to this upcoming total solar eclipse on April 8th of 2024. So there's the 88 and 88. And there's also a butterfly known as Anna's 88, which is shown here. And this image is courtesy of the YouTube channel from games to God again. And again, go check out his videos as they're really phenomenal. But I had noted that Mercury's orbit around the sun is equal to 88 days. And I'm not gonna debate the flat earth versus, or the flat solar system, or Mercury's orbit around the sun takes 88 days. You have the symmetry of Anna the prophetess mentioned in Luke chapter 2, which is verses 38, 36 through 38, which sums to 111, and that's the symmetry seen here. And again, between the annular solar eclipse ring of fire, October 14th to the symmetry date of January 11th is 88 days. And from there to the upcoming Total solar eclipse is another 88 days from the line of symmetry. And that's also a connection with Anna's 88 butterfly shown here. But since it's speaking of Mercury having an orbit of 88 days, in Acts chapter 14, verse 12 of the King James Version only, it says, and they call Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurius, which means Mercury, because he was the chief speaker. And if you look at other versions, they use the uh, Roman God name. So you need to look at the King James Version only. So you see the symmetry between the 111 and this 88 butterfly, the 88 day orbit around the sun for Mercury, and then in Acts 14, verse 12, again, the King James Version only, you have Paul being called Mercurius or Mercury. So there's a lot of connections between Anna again, uh, which is within that region of totality 
of the intersecting two eclipses across the United States. So you might be asking, how does Mercury come into play? Well, prior to the 1811 earthquake at the New Madrid Zone, with the Great Comet or Tecumseh's Comet or Napoleon's Comet, there was a very close Mercury, the Great Comet or Tecumseh's Comet conjunction during that year with alignment with the Earth. And they believe that this close conjunction of the comet and the planet Mercury formed a crustal weakness at the New Madrid zone due to it being a near Earth orbit or a neo at that time prior to the earthquake eruption in 1811. So at the time of the total solar eclipse over Little Egypt, and here's the Pondsbrook Comet or Devil's Comet, it is directly pretty much all in the same scene. Jupiter, Pondsbrook, uh, or Devil's Comet, Mercury, and the total solar eclipse all on April 8th at the time of the maximum eclipse is all in the scene and seems to be in agreement with Acts 14 verse 2 with Jupiter being Barnabas, the Devil Comet or Tecumseh's Comet, Mercury being Paul Mercurius, and the total solar eclipse all in the heavenly scene together per Acts 14, 12. So I had found this information, but I can't recall where I got the source from, but if I find it, I'll include it about about near-Earth objects or NEO, but it stated that the New Madrid Seismic Zone earthquakes of 1811 through 1812 may not have been caused by strictly run-of-the-mill seismic activity. The possibility that some near-Earth orbit or NEO, such as the Great Comet of 1811, which is Tecumseh's uh, comet, was an out, outside of the box crustal stressor. If a neo involvement is found, then some fear of the unknown about the timing of the next big one pertaining to the new magic earthquake may come to be dispelled. So the possibility of the devil's comet might be another outside the box crustal stressor for the new Madrid zone and be the cause of the next big one in that region and that might be coming soon. So there are also other Anna connections which are associated with the Titanic sinking and the sequence of events that are coming up. Um, so I'm getting there so please hang in there. Um, I'm just about finished. So there's the analemma, I'm calling it the analemma, which is the figure eight that the sun makes in the sky if you measure the position of the sun from your location at the same time of the day, say at noon, for every day of the calendar year, it forms this figure eight. And here's another view of that figure eight. The lobe is a little bit smaller on the upper section while the lower section's uh, quite larger. It's almost like an hourglass, but it forms the figure eight. And if you zoom into the region of the center part where they intersect, shown over here, that occurs twice a year, but the first one is on April 14th, if it's a leap year, or April 15th if it's on a non-leap year. So on those dates was the transition from the 14th of April 111 years ago to April 15th 
which will become the 112th anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic. So there's a crossover point between those two dates, just like with the analemma between a non-leap year and a leap year. But more importantly, it's still we're still within the 111th anniversary or the 111, but at the time of the sinking on April 15th, we will go into the 112th year. So the crossover point for the Titanic sinking that becomes the 112th anniversary that occurs on April 15th of 2024. So I think from this total solar eclipse is still we're still in the 111 uh, time frame, but then we're about to soon cross over the threshold, this red line represented here, into the 112th year, all of it being represented by the sequence of events associated with the Titanic sinking. So I wanted to take a look at the transition of the sequence of events that occurs during the uh, first part of the Titanic sinking and then the time period from when the Titanic is completely underwater, submerged underwater, which was on April 15th. And then that becomes the 112th year since the sinking of the Titanic where prior to this red line, we're still in the 111th year, the last hours prior to the sinking of the Titanic. So I wrote down the sequence events uh, that are listed. There's, they have a lot of complete logs, but the Titanic's duration was two hours and 40 minutes. When it struck the iceberg, it was at 11.40 p.m. thereabout uh, at 2, 5, at, excuse me, at 2.17 a.m. The Titanic breaks into two. Then at 2.20 a.m. The Titanic slips beneath the surface of the water and then it reaches the bottom of the ocean at 224. But that's the complete sinking that occurs at 220 AM. And the rest of it is when the Titanic uh, is completely submerged but falls to the bottom of the ocean. And then on the next day, on the 15th of April 1912, at 4.10 a.m., the Carpathia arrives and it says plucks survivors of the Titanic from the lifeboats. Lifeboat number two is the first to be evacuated. And I'll go back into this, but the Carpathia, I wanted to look up where that, the meaning of that word stems from the word Carpathian which has its origin in the uh, thruk, <laughs> I don't know, excuse me, on. I'll have to skip that. Greek, which is Carpathus Oros, meaning Rocky Mountain. So then I noticed something that was really, I think, intriguing and will actually be colossal in my humble opinion on what's about to play out so highlighted here is just for the uh total solar eclipse over little egypt it begins at 11:42. just looking at the numbers it's actually 12:42 central daylight time but if you fall back it's 11:42 central standard time and that's virtually the starting time of when the Titanic hits the iceberg. They actually rounded it down to 11.40 p.m., but I think it was 11.42 p.m. 
not looking at the AM versus the PM, but just strictly the numbers. So 1142 is when the eclipse begins over Little Egypt, Illinois, and that's when the Titanic strikes the iceberg. And then the time of totality, uh, just the total eclipse part, not the uh, partial parts at the start and the end, but the total eclipse duration is 2 minutes and 40 seconds. So that's 240. And the Titanic's duration is 2 hours and 40 minutes from the time the Titanic strikes the iceberg to where it, the Titanic reaches the bottom of the ocean. And then finally, from the onset of the total solar eclipse over Little Egypt, so when it first starts to when it completely finishes and the sun's back being unblocked by the moon is a total of four minutes and 10 seconds. So 410. And the Carpathia arrives to pluck the survivors from the Titanic's lifeboats. The lifeboat number two is the first to be evacuated. Occurs at 210. Again, not looking at the AM, but in the minutes and seconds, but just the numbers. So I think this is how the sequence of events are about to play out with the United States and then note that at 217 it is when the Titanic breaks into two parts. So just as with the Titanic and its passengers thinking that that ship was unsinkable, the same belief is true in my humble opinion for the United States that we do not believe that the United States will sink and will fall. So now going back to this slide for the chronology of events that occurred with the Titanic sinking from the date of the 14th of April, and then it was completely underwater at 2.20 a.m., but it hits the bottom of the ocean four minutes later. The transition across this red line goes into the 112th or 112 from the 111. So I think we're at the point of no return. And then at 4.10 is when the Carpathia arrives to pluck the survivors from the Titanic from lifeboats and they're evacuated. And again, Carpathia in the Greek means Rocky Mountain. And we know that Jesus Christ is our solid rock. So this is just my speculation. It's not thus says the Lord, but this is what I'm seeing based on the Titanic's sequence of events from the time it strikes the iceberg to the time it sinks to the bottom and then the survivors are plucked or rescued at that point. So I think at the onset of the total solar eclipse at 1142 and they just rounded this down to the nearest number. So I think it could easily have been 1142 that it struck the iceberg so i think when the eclipse starts just begins over little egypt i think we're going to strike the iceberg proverbially and that might be the shaking or the onset triggering of the new madrid fault then uh it has the uh, at 12 30 the next day, but that's not the crossover point to where it sinks completely on at, and I'm, I'm not saying when it crosses over 
on the clock time, but when it completely sinks. Then the lights go out and the ship is broken into two pieces and that could be the new Madrid fault breaks the United States from west to east. And prior to that, the lights go out and that's when the time of totality of the total solar eclipse, but here it might be the lights go out in the United States when the two parts start to fall into two pieces from the great shaking of the new Madrid earthquake. Then the ship starts to bow. And I think the forward part, I forgot what it's called. The, um, excuse me, I know it, but, um, and that might be the Eastern part of the United States and followed by the Western part of the United States being pulled under as well. Then the Titanic slips completely beneath the surface of the water. And then four minutes later, uh, the total duration of totality, which was at 240, which is the duration of the Titanic's chronological sequence of events. And then some two hours later, so from start to finish of the totality of the total solar eclipse, that's when the survivors are plucked or, or snatched away and are evacuated by the Rocky Mountain, the, the rock of our salvation, Jesus Christ. So from Carbondale, Illinois, which is in very close proximity to Little Egypt, Illinois, here is the total solar eclipse information from the time that it begins its maximum to the time that it ends with a duration of the time shown and then the totality that was shown and it's starting here it has 1242 but if you fall back to daylight central daylight time to central standard time it would be 1142 because they didn't have daylight savings back during the time of the sinking of the Titanic. And um, so I think I think we're seeing what's about to occur. I don't know, like I said, I'm, it's not thus says the Lord, but there is a one-to-one -one correlation between this upcoming total solar eclipse over little Egypt and the sequence of events shown associated with the chronological events of the sinking of the Titanic. So I'll conclude here with Christ is our lifeboat and our rock or our Carpathia of salvation. So it's time to get on the lifeboat. If you guys have not been saved yet, please get saved. The time is very, very short. I'm seeing April 15th as a possible rapture date or the harpazo. I'm not saying thus says the Lord, but it's really looking that way after this total solar eclipse. And it might occur on the day of the solar eclipse or transitions from the 111 to the 112, which is April 14th which is the 111 and it transitions over to the point of no return to April 15th, the 112 or the 112th anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic. So again, Christ is our lifeboat. Get on the lifeboat as he is our rock and our salvation, our Carpathia. Anyways, I hope that this video has been a blessing to you. Please like and share this video as I think it's pretty massive. It's a massive finding in my humble opinion. 
and time to get again get your houses in order the time is too short we're already coming up on march 31st which was another high watch date but especially the first half of the month of april in particular during the time frame of the total solar eclipse on april 8th and the date of the sinking of the titanic on april 15th so anyways i'll stop here but please share and like this video again and i want it to get out to not only those who are likely to be the bride and will be raptured or harp pot so but for those friends and family members who are left behind you need to do that as a watchman and as a part of the body of christ which they will be part of the great multitude the great harvest that will join us later on so it's important and critical for them as well to get this information anyways again i hope it's been a blessing and i shall talk to you soon if not i'll see you in the clouds take care